Yo, what is going on guys? SCJ here back with another video and today I'm making a video on a topic I feel is necessary to make or important and that's the difference between underappreciated and underrated. So why am I making this video and why do I feel this is important? Well, because this is something that I see people confusing way too often and now that I'm creating content on anything I want and not just strictly the Brooklyn Nets as I'm also a writer for the BrooklynGame.com, I now feel this is something I'm able to put out there and talk about or explain. People might be laughing at this intro as they feel the difference is self-explanatory and while I do agree and it pretty much is, many people simply don't seem like they know the difference or they use the wrong term when describing anything and mostly NBA players and rappers or hip hop artists. So today we're diving into this and I'm going to talk about the difference between those two words. So let's get into it. So in terms of a guy that I see in the world of basketball get called underrated on social media at least once a month or multiple times a month on quote unquote NBA Twitter is Dirk Nowitzki. Dirk isn't underrated, he's simply underappreciated. Pretty much anyone who knows the game of basketball would say Dirk was great at what he did. Dirk had a very decorated career to say the least. Some of the most notable achievements or accomplishments are being one of eight guys in the 50-40-90 club, being a 14-time All-Star, winning an MVP as well as a championship and finals MVP in 2011, and he of course is currently sixth all-time in the all-time scoring list with 31,560 points for his career. Anybody who knows basketball or sports or hell maybe even someone who doesn't know that would look at those numbers and say that was a hell of a career and someone who was a legendary player. So if people are acknowledging he's a future Hall of Famer and legend, then he clearly is not underrated. He's simply underappreciated then. Dirk was one of the driving forces that's why the NBA's big men play the way they do today, and he was the first stretch big or stretch four that shot the three ball. So he may deserve more credit and recognition than he already gets for his accomplishments and influence in which I just talked about, but that doesn't mean he's underrated. That simply means he's underappreciated. In terms of a true player that in my opinion is underrated, we've got to take a look at a man who made his first all-star appearance this season, which I think was deserved a thousand percent, and that man is Pascal Siakam. Now I know what you may be thinking, or what many people is probably thinking, and that is nah man, Siakam isn't underrated, just underappreciated, but personally I'd like to beg to differ. I've heard many people give Siakam props, but they just call him good or a very solid player, sometimes even very good, but I personally see him as more than that. This season, Siakam has had a huge effect on the game and has been all over the court as he's averaging 23.6 points, 7.5 rebounds, 3.6 assists, 0.9 blocks, and 1 steal per game. These are excellent stats in my opinion, and I in fact believe that Siakam has more room to grow as a player, and he can and probably will grow as a scorer and a more versatile defender. Siakam is the biggest reason that the Raptors are in the same position that they were last year at this point in the season, despite the team losing Kawhi this previous offseason. I think Siakam's development and growth as a player last season was also why the Raptors were a remarkable 17-5 in the 22 games that Kawhi didn't play last season. This Raptors team was truly more than just Kawhi, and while I thought they would still be a top 5 seed in the East after losing Kawhi, I didn't see them being the number 2 seed once again this season, and the biggest reason for that is Siakam and how he's improved yet again this season. Siakam has taken small jumps in terms of rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals, but Siakam jumping from 16.9 points last season to 23.6 points this season just shows how good of a player he truly is and that he's more than just a good or solid player. He's in my tier three or my third tier in terms of great players. The first tier is superstar, the second tier is star, and the third tier that I place Siakam in is the all-star category, and I think we may see him enter the star category within the next season or two. While we may not be able to consider him a young player anymore as he just turned 26 this past April, he was 25 during the entire 19-20 season before it got suspended in March, and putting those numbers up while still in the 25 and under club is very good in my opinion. One little thing I also want to talk about is a player being so hyped up that people feel it's necessary to talk down on said player, which can make a guy seem underrated in the eyes of many. And a great example I can give for that is when looking at one of my favorite young players and favorite players, Zion Williamson. The incredible highlight reel style of play from Zion made him a viral sensation when he was just 15 years old, and as a result, he's become loved by many. However, as a result of this, people will talk about Zion and make it out to seem like he is a top 5 player in the league currently. 
This turns people off, and just from seeing the response to him featured in the 2K21 reveal trailer, people seem sick of the Zion hype already. I've seen people say he's not in the top 5 in terms of young players, which is personally ridiculous to me. As a result of this, you can look at Zion and call him underappreciated or underrated in the eyes of some people in a sense. However, is Zion really underappreciated overall or underrated overall? Probably not, but you will see certain players in this strange no man's land category like Zion is in, which is crazy. This man is a top 3 young player in my eyes, and Zion is averaging 23.6 points, 6.8 rebounds, 2.2 assists a game, and his Pelicans team has actually improved a bit since he's returned, as they were 12 games under 500 when he returned, and now they're only 8 games under. Not a huge increase, but for one rookie with no NBA experience to come back in the middle of the season and make his team better, I'd say that's very solid, and I think Zion is the perfect example to use when talking about this strange no man's land category in terms of under appreciated versus underrated. This of course doesn't just happen in the world of basketball like I said before as I see people who are fans of many different things making the same mistake in terms of confusing those two words. I know most of my base or my subscribers are mainly basketball and or sports fans but if we can take a look at hip hop really quickly I can show you guys yet another example of underappreciated versus underrated and I'll do it quickly not to bore my non hip hop fans or people who simply don't care. Similar to Dirk, we can look at one of my favorite hip-hop artists, Denzel Curry. He actually tweeted about how he doesn't like people calling him underrated, and I personally agree. Just like Dirk, if you know the field in which he's in, which is of hip-hop of course, then you can listen to one of his songs or albums and say this guy is very good and can spit bars, thus making him underappreciated. One of the guys who is underrated is another guy whose music I love, and that's Freddie Gibbs. Freddie Gibbs has dropped nothing but great music and albums over the last five or six years and has at least one album that could be considered a classic, yet he never gets talked about highly enough or receives the credit or appreciation that he deserves. That is underrated, my friends, and that's why I wanted to make this video. While you may not listen to some dude with under a thousand subs as of right now on YouTube and take his advice, and I understand that, I would say take what I said into account and realize that there is a pretty decent difference between those two words and using those words when talking about something like this. Anyway guys, this was just a quick video that I wanted to make and it might end up being my shortest video, but I wanted to make this and since of course I had examples to give in terms of talking basketball, I felt that I might be able to put this into a quick little video that was entertaining to some of you guys and talk on something I see people confusing very often. This is definitely content different from what I usually make, but like I said, with having freedom to post what I want and with me not wanting to just become an only basketball channel and eventually grow my channel and content out, I felt using basketball to give a examples of this would make for a solid video. If you like this video, then give it a like. If you want to see more videos like this one or like my typical NBA breakdown content and such, hit that subscribe button. And I'm SCJ and I am out. Peace.